Uh, I appear to be back there. My preview. There we go. We are back. Nice. There we go. Okay. Yeah. That one wasn't me. That one wasn't me. Everything was fine. Me and Biv are still in the call. That was on Twitch, that one. Um, so, yeah, I don't know why. Yeah, yeah, just Twitch dropped out there. But we're back. We're back. Um, we were talking about Among Us. That's what we're doing. I was asking if you guys had played. Do you watch it? What are your thoughts on it? Are you excited about playing anything new? And if you are, are you bothered about the fact that it's taking a little while? Do you know what? Before we go off again, I will just... Jump straight into the article. So Among Us was one of the smash hits of 2020. It reportedly had nearly half a billion players in November. Uh, and there are some exciting updates announced for the game, including a new airship map and an account system. In a blog posted yesterday, developer Inner Sloth discussed how it is adapted in response to the game's enormous popularity and why new features are taking a while to be released. Among Us gained incredible traction pretty late into 2020 that we weren't expecting, and that meant a lot of change for us, the developers said. Uh, Inner Sloth, which is comprised of just four employees, had to spend two months restructuring, figuring out processes, and working with new external partners, according to the blog. Uh, it's all behind-the-scenes work, and while it m meant um, time away from the game, it'll make it easier for current and future us uh, to develop the game better, Innersloth said. The studio has juggled bringing the game to new platforms. It hit Nintendo Switch in December, and is coming, out, uh, coming to Xbox One and the Xbox Series X and S consoles in 2021. Uh, there's a lot to look forward to, though. The airship map, which is scheduled to come out in early 2021, has new tasks, uh, new tasks to complete, as well as ladders and floors platforms for traversal. Inner Sloth aims to launch the account system ASAP with a focus on moderation and the studio plans to share a public feature roadmap at some point. Nice and like that. So we go from yes. EEA regulations and <laughs> equality versus equity to Among Us is getting stuff eventually. <laughs> what a difference. Um, Quickly, someone put 50p in the meter. <laughs> yeah, that was that was on Twitch, that one. So it, we literally usually don't have the stream going down. We've had it going down twice in one day. God damn it. God damn it. Um, damn. So, Among Us, have you played it yet, Bip? Have you watched any more? Because I know you weren't really sold by it initially. What are your thoughts? I played it with my family, so I played it with my two nephews, my brother, my sister, and Samantha, we've had a, I've had a few games on that. And don't get me wrong, I actually it, it's okay. Do you know what I mean? It's okay. I, it it's just basically like a role playing game. The people who usually take the piss out of people playing Dungeons and Dragons, but will love Among Us. It's it's the same concept. You have to play a character. You have to be somebody else. It's the same concept, just a different game. It's it's okay. It's okay. But I, I think what they're doing is right. Obviously, they're taking things step by step. I'm going to say something now. I'm going to check it first before I absolutely put my foot in it. Oh, um, oh, oh. So let me just go to twitch.tv uh, for slash ice cream uploads. Now, I don't want to watch ourselves. I just want to check something, right? Because I, if it's, a, it's only a f game has been out since, what, 2018? The beginning of 2018. It's been going for a long time. And it's recently just started to get like a... I'd say recently, for the last couple of months, it's been like the, one of the number one watch things on Twitch. I'm just going to check something now on Twitch when I can find it. So I want to use this as an example. And I don't want to shoot myself in the foot before I do it. Um, I'm just going to say it because I can't find it, which is probably where my thoughts come in. Fall Guys mm -hmm. is my example I'm going to use for this. Fall Guys came out of the gate with to an explosion shall we say it was unbelievable every man and his dog was playing it it was the at one point the number one watch game on twitch i can't i'm scrolling and i can't find it. it's probably because i don't watch it it's probably not near the top but that tried to evolve as fast as it could the marketing for that game was superb the person who looked after was it oliver age 24 yeah is that the guy um he he made that account bang and everyone wanted to play that game now i can't see I can't see it. It's not in the list. I'm trying to scroll and find it, and I can't see it. But that game tried to evolve as fast as the people who were playing it. They tried to throw new content out, season passes, brand new things, blah, blah, blah. I can't see it anymore. But people, Among Us is still at the top. I don't even have to scroll, and it's right there. Um, so I think taking your time with it is definitely the best way to be able to do this. And that's exactly what they're doing. They're making sure that when their new content comes out, it's going to bang and people want to continue playing this game again. 
I know that was kind of round the houses explanation as I was trying to find stuff as things were coming into my head, so I apologise for that. Um, but yeah, I feel like it's definitely one of them games where you have to play it. I don't find watching it that great. Like you said, you watch it when you know the people who are playing it because you know their personalities. Um, and it be kind of comes like you're, you're one of their mates, you know, you're in the group and you know that who's blagging it and things like that, which is fantastic from a watch standpoint. But for me, it's just one of the games I just can't watch. I'd rather watch something else. I'd rather watch someone speed run Resident Evil. Do you know what I mean? Let me give you some um, interesting stats. Um, go on, go for Fall it. Guys currently has 1.3 thousand viewers on Twitch, which is the same amount as GoldenEye 007. Uh, wow. So Fall Guys, the biggest game in the world, has the same amount as a game that hasn't been released in the last 25 years-ish. Uh, same amount of concurrent viewers. That's interesting. Does that show a significant fall from Grace? Um, and I, if, I want to see the play numbers. If it I mean, The does, watch numbers are shit, but... I was going to say, if it, does, if it does, the reason I'm asking the question is if that shows a significant fall from Grace. Another game that has 1.3 thousand viewers, as well as Fall Guys and GoldenEye, is Cyberpunk 2077. Interesting. <laughs> Interesting. Yeah. Uh, the Witcher has 6.7 thousand people watching it. And uh, this is one for you, Asim. There's 6.1 thousand people watching someone play the Mafia remake. 3.7 thousand people watching RuneScape. So, I, again, I was trying to find some stats to try and back up the thoughts that I had on this. And the Fall Guys thing, it seems to have fallen off the edge of the earth. I don't see that many people playing it anymore. And I don't see that many people watching it on my friends list. That says a lot. But I imagine, I still see people in the evening on my friend, on my, on my people who I follow on Twitch, all playing Among Us with their friends. Uh, it's still highly relevant. And it, it, it's is it because they're taking their time with it? They're not just rushing stuff out. They're not overwhelming people. They're not saying, here's a new season pass. It, it, it's like when you play PUBG. I know PUBG is obviously still a massive game and still a lot of people watching and playing it. But when a new battle comes out, it's a big deal. Yeah. It's not just being crammed in on the left side. Like, new update today, new update today. New... I mean, I could just be talking absolute ass, and I probably... <laughs> that's what we do. Yeah, that's just the way that I see things. That's just the way that I see things. Not every game gets away with that. If a game doesn't have content, it will die. Not always, but that's a general thing that you hear. Not enough content. Ah, fuck it. No one's playing it. There's not nothing coming to it. But Among Us always has content. It's one of those games because it's not. It's all. It's it's like Dungeons and Dragons in essence. Dungeons yeah. and Dragons. Your dungeon master has the idea of the story. But it evolves because of the people, the characters, yes. uh, your avatars that you bring to the table and the way that you evolve that. And that is why I think Among Us doesn't have to rush content because all Among Us does, it, it gives people a platform to yeah. do their their thing. To be somebody else. Yeah, exactly. Um, I don't play it. If I was to play it, I don't play it as me. I play it as a completely different personality because you ha you can't be me. I, I'm a I'm a terrible liar. Like Samantha says this all the time. If I start to lie, if I start to lie, I start to <laughs> he's already grinning. <laughs> I, can't do it. I just find it. It, I, I just find it kind of impossible to be able to do so if i was to play this game i have to play in a completely different room from somebody else and put a completely different personality on because my personality would not shine through with a game like this because i just get found out every single time every single time i would be found out Bibi, so, yeah did it, you kill him <laughs> no <laughs> <laughs> but that's it that's why i kind of i, I wanted to compare it to the likes of dungeons and dragons when you play that game you don't you're not yourself you are somebody else your personality has to shine through your character is probably maybe a warrior or a mage or something like that. So you'd have to be in character to be able to play that game. And that's exactly what I think Among Us is. You don't go into that game playing as Bibbit or Grim. You go in with a completely different personality to try and throw people off the scent or whatever it is. But that's why I compared it to it. Because I think it's I think it's quite a good comparison. I mean, again, people will probably think, what the fuck is he talking about? Which you would probably be absolutely correct. But that's why I'd use that as a comparison. You play it as somebody else. And like you say, you create the content as the people who are playing it you're it's only as enjoyable as the people who are playing it if they're just playing it and it's a bit drab and there is no confusion or people wanting to be an arsehole in the game then there is no game yeah they give you the tools to play the game it's entirely up to you how you play it and the people who you play it with 
Yeah. If that makes any sense no, whatsoever. That, that makes sense. That, that makes sense. Um, Mad says, and back. I'm assuming that's the mobile thing, because we've been back for a couple of minutes, so I'm assuming there's there's more of a delay on mobile. But yeah, we did drop out for about about 15 seconds, 20 seconds-ish. Um, Mr. T says, um, as predicted by sensible slash logical people, Fall Guys has fallen away. E. Uh, <laughs> Gary says that this was the sort of story that we need among us right now. <laughs> you guys. <laughs> um, I think... Uh, yeah, Fall Guys, we said early on that it it wouldn't last. And I said that, not in a negative way. I don't I don't mean that as negatively, by the way. just want to uh, confirm that. Fall Guys wouldn't stick around because it was doing something unmaintainable. You can't maintain at that level. In the same way that Fortnite is still massive, 71.9 thousand top five games on Twitch Fortnite viewed. Obviously, this is viewer numbers. Player numbers are probably still pretty high as well. Um, but Fortnite is still in the top five games. Um, everyone expected that to be a boom or bust, but Fortnite has kept adding the content, has improved the game and, and all that. Fortnite was made by Epic. Um, Epic have huge development teams, have resources and budgets, whereas uh, Mediatonic, as a, de- a developer, completely different scale. So Fall Guys was always going to be something that was hard uh, to to evolve and iterate over the time and not only that you play fortnite based on skill and my my ability and i want to win a game and there's a high skill gap when you get into the building element fall guys yeah there's a bit of a skill gap but it's mainly the party game element obviously novelty versus genuine solid interest so that was always going to drop off my my curiosity around fall guys though is how that now evolves and and that comes from one of the comments that I made a million years ago when Fall Guys was was huge and on the up um, was, okay, it's easy to make Fall Guys content now. The social media team around Fall Guys are getting praised to death. And they should have done. Oliver Age 24 and the other people working on that brand um, smashed it. Well done. E- yeah. Exceptional. The way that they were working with content creators, the way that they were uh, taking the piss out of Timmy Tenders, the way that we were um, encouraging brands and, and cultivating uh, that crossover content. It worked exceptionally well for them. Once they got it cultivated, it fed itself uh, because of the, the nature of it. My intrigue, though, is how they work now because it's easy to push a brand on its way up, but when a brand's yeah. on its way down, it's harder to push it back up because you've got mm-hmm. the momentum's not with you it's against you so yeah I'd, I'd love to see how that works now among us on the other hand didn't necessarily feed the fire it didn't necessarily yeah. have brand crossover and everyone feeding into it among us was good because you knew it was good for you and your friends and, and, and so on so yeah they haven't had this groundswell to fall into they've just been maintaining which which is much much more sustainable um, I think party games like that though, they are kind of i don't want to say once in a lifetime but they, co- they don't come around as often as people think where it, t- it kind of takes the world by storm and stays there for a while um so when something like fall guys comes around it's kind of like let's see where we can go with this like try and do what we can as fast as we can and then see how long it lasts for it was never going to last long uh, and i think people who probably work in the game industry knew that that's why is me that they, it felt like fall guys came out and then there was esports competitions run alongside it for as long as they could probably try and take that momentum i haven't seen a fall guys tournament in whatever for forever like i don't even know if they still do them anymore um but the, it's just it was a very good party game for the time being however among us you play it with your friends do you know what i mean it's like what you're doing this evening like i play with my friends on pga that that's my evening game of what i know about with my mates online we all jump onto pga and have a round of golf because that's what we'd normally be doing but it's snowing outside and there's a lockdown but a party game like among us or jackbox party i've just started to get into that properly and that is hell of fun like having someone on a stream open it up to the rest of the world and be able to jump in i like, mean samantha have sat downstairs and joined other people's games that we're watching on twitch that we don't even know but then you get to know them through their party chat and stuff like that. So we just go onto the party chat box and then do whatever. I mean, it doesn't have a massive audience chat box. It probably will do in the evenings, but right now it's less than a thousand people. Do you know what I mean? Um, but those party games seem to last longer. It's just about how you can kind of evolve, but don't cram it down people's necks. Because there wasn't a point when it Fall Games first came out that it wasn't on my timeline. People was playing it, which is fine. I, it wasn't my kind of game, but people absolutely adored it. Uh, jumping back into the chat, um, 
off subject, uh, a little off subject, something to come back to. Uh, have you heard about Gmod 2? Um, as in Gary's mod? I haven't. I haven't. No. Um, game, uh, another off, off subject thing from Enix says, game dropping another lot of PS5s taken from scalpers. Um, uh, when to next? Right now, I've just I was just looking at that whilst you were doing that. Uh, there is another queue that you have to wait for for over an hour. So that comes back to the meme that I shared yesterday. Since yesterday to today, game won't have put any anti-bot shit in. So the scalpers that jump past queues with technology are still going to get there first. So it's a bullshit system. Uh, so if you're not in the queue by now, you're not getting one. Don't bother wasting your time. You're not going to get in. Um, uh, do, 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 do. Scrolling back up, where's my mouse? There it is. Um, uh, no, I'm back. I was on the call with Gus. I was ah, well, welcome back, man. Hey, uh, no disrespect. Hey, comes first, match. Yeah, absolutely. I will work here on Twitch, yeah. obviously. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no disrespect to the Fall Guys team or anyone linked to it, but it was always going to be a fad. And true longevity was a pipe dream. They caught lightning in a bottle with the pandemic on social media, not the playbook everyone should follow, like execs at game companies would suggest, and the timing of its release. Absolutely, absolutely. The fact it was free, um, everyone was at home, everyone needed something to do. Like, Tiger King was a fucking bizarre watch, and I'm glad I watched it, but would that have been successful? As successful? Um... If it came out at another time, it just meant that everyone could watch it that first weekend. And because it was short, everyone digested it that first weekend. Tiger King uh, is another one that, that was kind of caught lightning in a bottle kind of thing. I mean, it was good. I agree with you on that because Louis Farouk did a documentary on it and it didn't get half as much praise as the documentary. Obviously, Louis Farouk is only like an hour, but I agree with you on that. Yeah, it's, it's, it's having something that's, that's fun and simple at the right time and that's that the one about cats as well that was another one yeah I, uh, don't fuck with cats i literally watched that yeah. two days ago a uh, fucking exceptional thing I, I i didn't watch it two years ago because it was called don't fuck with cats and i was like oh well, that sounds like it's it's trying to be too wild and it was shit fuck <laughs> off now you're all right but we just watched the ripper and then we watched night stalker um so i was like okay well we'll watch don't fuck with cats now and it was it was wonderful it was wonderful it was good it's good it's good um, be right back well, not wonderful. It was actually horrendous, but okay, baby. Um, it was horrendous, but definitely wonderful. From a, I need to keep watching the experience. But yeah, Asim nailed, nailed on the head. Anyway, you did have um, more comments. Where was it? Um, Among Us has more longevity and legs due to the type of game it is and how it can be varied. Remains utterly watchable. I completely agree. Um, Jordan says, as we said, Graham, games content is too thin and it would die off quick due to that. But it's also repetitive as fuck. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Um. Match. <laughs> Still, Fall Guys probably has more of a player base than Marvel's Avengers. Yeah, probably. Probably. I mean, definitely. Pretty definitely will have. Um, which is te a testament to Fall Guys using the time that they had, but also Marvel not quite hitting what uh, they wanted. Um, a square, should I say. Uh, yeah, what you said, Graham, around the social media stuff. Kind of annoyed how Fall Guys social media strategy was seen as the be all and end all. Now, nah, fuck that. Like you said, fair play, they caught that line in the bottom and ran with it. But like you said, easier to ride the wave and have a strategy, harder to sustain it uh, and keep the numbers up. Chucky boy! Hey, welcome in. How did you get on in your FIFA stream? Um, I did drop out, uh, obviously, to come back on here. So it's nice to see you're in here. Welcome in. Welcome in. Um, but yeah, it is. It's, it's easy to to run with a uh, not not even a fad something that is trending if something is trending that people are actively searching for people are actively playing it's easy to run with that not easy it's easier let's go with that it's easier if if everyone wants your content uh, and is willing to submit their opinions their impressions their tweets their images i've bought it here's a screenshot it means that you as a content creator um, as a social media manager, should I say, have shitloads of UGC feeding into that system. That then becomes ever decreasing circles because, okay, I've shared my, my thing now and I've played it now, so I'm, so I'm not going to bother. You basically inspire everyone to get in, but the faster you ex inspire them to get in, frosty, the yeah. faster you're inspiring them to get back out. I sub the IQ. I sub the IQ! <laughs> Thank you very much for the four months, Salty Dog. Welcome back, dude. Appreciate you for dropping that sub. What a guy. What a guy. Um, Thank you, mate. Make sure, I don't know if, I've, if you've done it before, I think you did, I think you've been in the loot drop previously, but make sure you're Twitch and Discord link so you can get into the loot drop next month, just a reminder. Um, uh, loot drop, by the way, if you don't know, exclamation mark loot drop in the chat, we'll give you the information on what that is. Uh, 
so yeah, it's easier to maintain when everyone is looking for your content. When people aren't and you have to create that groundswell, it's much, much more difficult. Thank you for so the Fortnite ice cream. was hugely successful. Panda, thank you very much for the host, dude. Much appreciated. Um, so Fortnite was hugely successful and they milked it and ran with it. Now their social media is a lot of fucking dead game, shit game. Oh, give us this or nerf that or whatever. Nobody even cares about these skins anymore. All you're doing is making us pay for the Predator or whatever. And it's just like, now those those guys at Epic that had that wonderful time of year, that Christmas where everyone was playing Fortnite like three years ago, whatever it was, uh, PUBG had had its, its big pop. Then it was like the, the start of Fortnite's... Um, it was, going to, it was supposed to be Fortnite's bubble. Their bubble hasn't burst, but it's definitely not as big as it was. But it's much harder for their teams now than it was then. And I agree with Asim that in terms of social media management is easy if everything is going right for you. Um, yeah. And it was for Fall Guys. It, not that it's going wrong for them now, but it's just not It's just not as easy now. Now is the point where they have to work. And this is what I said about six months ago, whatever it was, four months ago, I w I'm more intrigued as to how they manage this period. If you start to see people leaving uh, accounts, then I always think, mm, okay, maybe not. Maybe it was just a bit of a, a bit of luck. Um, and you, do, everyone needs a bit of luck in social media management. But I agree with Asim. The the oh, let's let's do what they did. Let's copy what they did. You can't copy what they did to get um, every brand out there to do their own version of your. Uh, fall guy and put in the game is not something that anyone can plan to do that happens and you run with it what they did was run with it and that is commendable but yeah i'm more interested to see how it sort of survives now uh anyway that was a huge tangent away from among us the devs say there's a, they're only a team of four they are working on stuff more stuff is coming um and yeah it will it will last forever so there you go there you go <laughs> uh chucky says hey chaps welcome in Welcome in. How was the stream? Um, anyway, speaking about Fortnite, that gives us a nice uh, off-ramp and on-ramp as we jump into our next article. Uh, this one is written by Tom Phillips at Eurogamer. It says, Fortnite will give away 20 million in prize money this year. Midas touched. I'm going to ask a question off-tangent just so I can get a drink. But, Bib, when yep. was the last time you played yes. Fortnite? How far are you into your Mandalorian missions? Uh, not very, because I actually, I told you this before Christmas, but I bought the Save the World stuff. I think it was like £4 or something like that. So I did actually play that more than what I played the Battle Pass stuff. That that, that Save the World stuff is actually pretty good, the, that base building shit. Um, I actually quite enjoyed it. So that's probably the last time that I played it, and that was maybe three weeks ago. It's a shame that that stuff didn't come out on the Switch, <clears throat> the Save the World stuff, because it's literally just the Battle Royale. Um, I'd much rather have played it on that. Um, but yeah, it's I haven't done that much. On the uh, on the Mandalorian. Stay frosty. What? Sorry. Okay, I'm gonna have to stop you because Enix has just gifted ten subs to the channel. What? <laughs> you absolute shagger! That does mean that he's gonna stay ruin the stream frosty. now because you're gonna get ten stay frosty years over the stream. But we appreciate, it. we appreciate. It. Thank you very much, Enix. What a guy. So Kulan, um, Fajd. Uh, Bacon Shin, Sammy J87, Ties, Fan Stay Plum Rico, frosty, Gaming man. Streams, Gone Hollow Live, Paul2707, and Luke Pastille, all getting tier one subs. Enix, you're already miles ahead uh, than anyone <laughs> when it comes to the uh, gifted sub chart. Not that we even ha frosty, have a chart, that's not what we're about, but but my God, thank you very much, dude. Appreciated it. Thank you so much, mate. Salty Dog says, I should have waited five minutes. <laughs> <laughs> you got damn right. Uh, thank you very much, Enix. What a guy. Stay Appreciate frosty, it. Man. Genuinely. I earn too much money. <laughs> well, drop another 10 then. God, I'm not joking. I'm not joking. I'm not, don't, don't do it. Don't do it. Uh, no, seriously, appreciate it. Um, as we have mentioned many, many times before, um, Stay frosty, yeah. we do this part time alongside the full time work. We do work in the games industry. That stuff we're paid for. This stuff we aren't paid for. So the fact that you guys do drop things like gifted subs or your own subs like Salty Dog. Seriously appreciate every single one of you that does that. Even the people that, that don't have the money to sub because money's, money's, money's not as free as it is right now. We understand that. Um, so just being here and watching gets us a view. Every view pushes us up the charts, which means more Stay people frosty. can see and just helps the channel grow. So seriously, I appreciate it. I, I, tell, I will say it. And I don't, I'm not, I'm not going to apologize for saying it and I will say it very regularly. We appreciate the support. Thank you very much. There you go. There you go. There you go. Anyway, back into the Stay news. Uh, let's see, let's see. Oh, 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 we're up to Paul. Okay, there's Luke to come, and then then, then we'll jump into the article so we don't get a Stay Frosties over the top of it. 
Wait a minute. Wait a minute. <laughs> Stay frosty. <Yeah. laughs> Jordan, 10 gifties. Thank you very much, dude. Absolute shagger. Thank you so much, mate. Uh, and on that bombshell, on that high note, let's jump into another one. Fortnite will give away 20 million in prize money this year, which is almost as much as Jordan earns in a week. Uh, <laughs> tagline Midas touched. Uh, Fortnite's champion series, the FNCS, uh, the game's pinnacle competitive series, will dole out a staggering 20 million dollars total prize money in 2021. Uh, players will continue to compete in a cross-platform pool with weekly qualifiers, then semi-finals and finals played out on separate weekends to manage player fatigue. Uh, the first three weekly qualifiers will take place in the first three weeks of February with semi-finals in the first week of March and finals the week after. Official coverage will now be broadcast in multiple languages for the first time with French, German and and Spanish speakers. Gameplay changes in the current uh, season include the removal of some traversal items to nerf movement, like the rift fish and uh, shockwave grenades, uh, as well as the disabling of elevators and IO guards. AI enemies, which can uh, quick uh, actually that's just explaining what IO guards. A uh, IO guards are AI enemies, which can quickly highlight your position and disrupt one-on-one -on -one players. Uh, FNCS will run with trio-based teams, but also include solo Saturday Cups for cash prizes and other trio and limited-time LTM uh, cash cups alongside. Uh, will today's new mythical Predator item that turns you invisible also be included, I wonder? No, it won't. Uh, but there you go. Nice and simple. Fortnite will give away $20 million in prize money in the Fortnite Champion Series, the FNCS, with a over a series of events that have uh, qualifiers, semifinals, and finals. Bib, what are your thoughts? This is massive. I mean, if they, if you wanted to Fortnite to be back into the competitive scene again, offer as much money as this, and you're right back up there again. I'm fairly certain, and I'm going to go out and live and say this one, I'm sure we covered something last year to say that the Fortnite esports was kind of dying off, and because they didn't have that many events last year, um, and people thought that maybe we're not going to see much of it anymore. And then they come back out with news like this. This is massive. 20 million. I don't know what that is in the grand scheme of what CSGO and Call of Duty are currently offering. But 20 million total prize money is unbelievable. Loving the weekly qualifiers, semifinals and finals. It's just, again, giving another spicy element to the Fortnite scene. Um, again, I would ne <laughs> I'm never going to be a competitive player in any of those things. Um, but to watch these, um, I mean... <sighs> The last Fortnite event that I watched was probably the last one. Is it was it Bunga that won when he was inside the stadium? Booga. Was that his name? Booga. Booga. That's it. <laughs> Bunga. Booga. Uh, Bunga. <laughs> I mean, I don't know why I'm laughing. Like, like Booga's any any uh like any better than Bunga? They kind of yeah. They, I mean, one's a bogey and one's something else. <laughs> so. Yeah, but it was the, the last one that they did inside the stadium. Um, I think it was, was he 16 year old? Something when like that. And he won it? Yeah, yeah. Something yeah, like that. it was inside the stadium and they had the massive stage. Uh, it was unbelievable. Um, but I thought that might have been the pinnacle of where we got with the Fortnite esports stuff. But how wrong was I coming back in with 20 mil to put into the pot? Unbelievable stuff. I think so, the, yeah, I'm excited to see where this goes towards the end of the year. I think the article last year was, was physical more than anything. It, I think this did say that the, um, the idea of doing the stadium sort of, the plans for that stuff. Uh, the Fortnite World Cup element will be paused and they will look at something alternative. I didn't expect 20 million prize pool alternatives. So <laughs> GG, GG, fair play. I mean, we're talking about Fortnite not having the same bubble as it had before. Not that the bubble bust, but it wasn't the same size. It's clearly not bust because if you can put 20 million into it, I mean, some games will put 20 million into it as like a last ditch. Shit, just roll the dice and see if we can make something out of it. But Fortnite, that 20 million, what's that? Yeah. They earn over a million a day or something. I don't know if they still do now. Um, but yeah, that's that's three weeks of revenue for a game to get massive exposure. So yeah, fair play, fair play. Um, jumping back, uh, John says you guys helped me a lot in my career when I worked with you, um, and plus was great to be a part of Team you back in the day. So huge support. No, thank you very much, dude. Genuinely appreciate it. Appreciate yeah. it. Um, uh, imagine if people was getting paid for this, he'd be buying that private jet to go alongside his Lambo. <laughs> you got them right. Uh, I mean, that's the reason why none of I don't get paid for it because two Lambos. Yeah, yeah, baby, two lambs over there. Yeah, that's what it is. Um, uh, he could freely wear a house coat without fear of judgment. <laughs> uh, good to see loads of money going to the esports side. The bigger the money, uh, more attention the industry it brings uh, in idiots who don't know what they're doing. Uh, 
uh, yeah, well, that's why we're here. Yeah, we want 20 million and we're idiots. Get us in the industry. Yeah, I'm only joking. No. Um, the qualifying for Fortnite esports is still mega rough. In what way? How is it rough in terms of uh, like how do you qualify? Because they were saying they have the solos. Is that like cash events? They were saying that. Is that like public events? And then the team stuff? How do you become a team? Um, oh, the amount you have to play qualifying cups in game. Ah, okay, yeah, I thought I thought that's that's how it was. I thought you were meaning like there was a separate sort of like invitational route for it as well. Um, yeah, no, it, it is. I mean, that's the thing though. Any game that has such a huge play base and such a high skill gap um, will always be obscene. Because um, mm -hmm. I mean, not that I'm undermining CS:GO at all. Um, I would probably prefer to watch CS:GO esports than than Fortnite esports. But CS:GO is getting fine-tuning the gunplay. I know that the gunplay is much, much more difficult in CSGO than it is in Fortnite. Mm -hmm. Obviously, once you're learning the patterns... Um, which pixel is, perfect. Um, <clears throat> what's that? I said you have to be pixel perfect on that. Yeah, exactly. Um, but that is very difficult in that area. Fortnite is very difficult in different areas. Obviously, the, the gunplay isn't as, as extreme. It's more like lasers compared to CSGO. Um, but then you have the building and the verticality side of it alongside it. So, yeah, just like CSGO is incredibly, dif incredibly difficult to get into a high level Fortnite. Same thing as well. Stay frosty. Uh, huge beans! Uh, it's just something that I eat and I shout out very regularly. So, there you go. Oh, and he's also here in the chat. Beans TV, ladies and gentlemen, dropping his 27 month sub. I think. Absolutely that still hero. makes you the longest subscriber ever to the channel beans so thank you very much so today jordan extends his lead as the biggest gifty ever and beans extends his sub as the longest sub ever so thank you very much for the oh, what a week yesterday we're streaming on insert coin this week gifties and, and long-term subs galore so thank you very much guys seriously appreciate it much love much love um see i, I, I would be i'll be a lot more interested in watching the uh Fish with the prime as well. There's some absolute shaggers in here today. Fish, Mr. Thank Fish. Thank you so much. Appreciate it. What a day. What a day. Thank you very much. <laughs> Thank you very much. Uh, how's things, Fish? How's things, Beans? We good? We good. We good. Uh, sorry, what were you saying then? Before these guys yeah, rudely I... interrupted by throwing money at us. <laughs> uh, I absolutely love watching team games. Things like CSGO. Uh, and Call of Duty. I absolutely love watching team games. I mean, I'll just throw this out there as well that I, I watched Precision, Fish, Craig, and I think it was Rob all played uh, game battles and stuff like that on Call of Duty. That stuff interests me no end. Like, I love watching team elements, especially in CSGO, because I'll always be like one sniper, uh, one person on the assault, one person who's just taking the damage and trying to be a scout. That stuff interests me a hell of a lot more than just watching someone play solos on Fortnite. I love the team element of games like that. All the comms and when you're hearing the team speak to each other, that stuff, that that is a roller coaster. do you know what I mean? Um, so that will always interest me more than the solo scene. Um, but yeah, this is this is mental. It, it, it would maybe something that I end up keeping an eye on. I mean, City tweeted out that they will be doing stuff with Phase uh, in terms of tournaments, and like a, a Phase Cup, because uh, obviously City have got their own skin. Have United got their own skin in the game? What, in Fortnite? I genuinely don't know. In yeah, in Fortnite. No, no, no. We're, we're, right. we're above that. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I did see something that I sent to you saying that Juve have got a skin. <laughs> I've got the badge in Fortnite, but they haven't even and that made me pissed. <laughs> no end. Um, but yeah, it, stuff like that is. It, I, do I dare to say that Fortnite is becoming super relevant again? Is that too far left field to be able to say something like that? Because hmm. it's always been relevant, but the esports side of it may be kind of fallen by the wayside. But it's it's going to make a massive comeback. I love it. I, there is a massive skill gap in in Fortnite because if you are someone like me who can't build for shit. It just becomes a gunfight, and if it comes becomes a gunfight with someone who's building, then I'm going to lose that every single time. So the skill gap in that game for me is building. Um, yeah, I think it's it, it's going to be mental. Yeah, I want to see how how bigger and better this going be. because there's still bit Fortnite is still dominating shit. Do you know what I mean? They're still getting into partnerships with a lot now football teams and esports teams. So yeah, I'm mean, I'm interested to see where this ends up. Yeah, I mean, Fortnite has always been relevant. I just how does it get back to where it was? Because we've we've had the Mandalorian themed season coming out alongside the Mandalorian in December, and it arguably has 
not lasted compared to previous seasons. So how do they do that? Is a new chapter, uh, rather than season 10 or whatever, once we get past that and they bring in chapter 3, does that bring it back? What can they put in to bring people in? Is, yeah. is Fortnite now stuck at the fact that you will never get back to Noob Central? In terms of, I mean, yeah, new chapters will give it you back, but if you start the game, you are going to be playing against master builders. People, the people playing the game mm -hmm. now are people that play the game. Um, Triple H reference, uh, well, well, unintentional, <laughs> by the way. I just heard it in my head as I said it. Time to play the game. Um, but um, he likes to be back. What's that? We need lightsabers back. <laughs> we do. We do need lightsabers back. That, that, was, that was the peak of Fortnite for me. And that was like nearly, well, it'll be 13 months yeah, ago. Yeah, a year and a bit. Um, the thing is, the lightsabers helped with kind of my, my biggest issue with Fortnite that I see, not not with Fortnite. I suppose it is for me. My biggest issue is the building. I don't want to build. But I, I appreciate the value and the beauty in it. But the biggest issue Fortnite has is how do you then... You can make the game easier by putting bots in. And and even if they put in skill-based matchmaking and, and things like that, you can make the game easier like that. But eventually people are going to hit a peak where building is something that they're going to have to do. So yeah. how do they get around that? How do they bring new people in? So it will always be relevant. It will always be huge. And for the people that want the challenge and getting into it, I think it'll be fine. But how do they, how do they reseat that and put it on the playground? And get, well, not that anyone's on the playground anymore but but you know what i mean so yeah that's always going to be difficult difficult yes that's the one difficult <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay mate you says beach yeah good very very good very very good we are today i mean we've we've dropped out the stream twice um but it's been it's been wonderful since then so nice as Gary says, the internet shit is bad, and then all this shit happens. Silver linings and all that. Uh, Fish says, <laughs> uh, game battles is class, just tough carrying Rob's for ass. <laughs> well, I don't know who Rob is, uh, unless unless I do, uh, but I can fully relate to whoever this Rob is. <laughs> that sounds like me. Uh, it would be. But yeah, anyway. Fish, you need to start streaming more of that in precision if you're in here as well. You need to start streaming all that because that was thoroughly enjoyable. Do it, do it, do it. I mean, if you want, if you want meat shields, me and Bib can jump in. We yeah. <laughs> um, oh god. Uh, I don't play it, and it's not for me. But Fortnite will always be relevant. It'll be up and down, but it's levels above most games. It's genuinely changed the industry, whether you like it or not. It has, and it's it's done it's done a lot of good in terms of uh, validating content creators, validating um, content creation platforms, validating um, uh, brands and video game crossovers. There, most brands have been in, in Fortnite by this point. There, I did see a joke saying, uh, a meme saying Fortnite is the Funko Pop Vinyl of video games. Because Funko Pop Vinyls are good. I mean, I, I have two over there. Um, and, and Groot stood there looking at me. Um, so I have some, but they were, they were this cool, cute collectible. And now people just like, oh, everything's got a Funko Pop Vinyl now. Um, so whilst they still maintain their value for a lot of people, a lot of people obviously just see them as, okay, it's been overdone now. Um, obviously, just perceptions. Nothing right or wrong either way, but Fortnite has that as well. Fortnite, if you look through people's uh, library of skins, it's like, okay, well, there's there's the Predator, um, and there's the Mandalorian, and there's Wolverine, and there's Kratos, God of War, and there's and, and you just keep going and going and going. So Fortnite has kind of got to that that bit but that all happened because it pushed it forward what other game could could say it's got a catalog like that i mean mortal kombat 11 has all the badass 80s films which is a good catalog but that's one season of Fortnite, effectively all the marvel characters in one season so yeah it's good waiting for the teletubby season pass <laughs> yeah nice <laughs> uh they should release a b-tech Fortnite without the building do you know i genuinely have thought about that in the past um, what if they did like limited time modes or, or if they had a part of a season where building just was wiped out for whatever reason in their storyline, how would that work? If you got gunfights, uh, how would that work? So that has kind of in intrigued me before. So yeah, be interesting. I'm not sure though, because it's the building that makes it what it is. The gunplay in Fortnite is, it doesn't have the legs that the gunplay in a, in a CSGO or PUBG would have. The reason I'm still playing PUBG a million years later is because I know if I pull the trigger, my gun is either going to melt someone or I'm going to look like a dick. Um, but it's my management of the bit that goes on in between as to how yeah. that ends up. Fortnite, it's you probably your shots are going to go where you want your shots to go. 
um, and that's pretty much it. Anyway, let's let's put the pin in because I, I don't know how long we've been live because we've been on and off air 17 times today. <laughs> so let's jump into our final story, which does tie into something that Jordan mentioned a few minutes ago um, in the chat. And it is that PS5 stock is due tomorrow. That's today. Um, for both BT and EE in the UK, Argos and Amazon later this week. This is written by Game Central at Metro. So if anyone is after a PS5, um, this article might be of interest to you. Uh, there's been no sign of new stock for the PS5 since Curry's uh, run out, but rumours suggest that multiple other shops should get more in soon. Since before Christmas, there's been rumours that uh, there would be a major new influx of stock for the PlayStation 5 around mid-January. But while shops like Game and Curry's <coughs> excuse me, have had more consoles in, they've run out so quickly that it's only really benefited scalpers. Uh, the reason they've run out so quickly is because of scalpers and shit systems, as we've said before. But there's no official word on when more will arrive, but Twitter account PS5 UK stock instant updates. Nice, valid source there. Just someone that created an account and shares things, uh, which has proven accurate in the past, believes that BT and the EE will get more consoles tomorrow, Thursday 21st, which is today. Buying... What's that? And I've just uh, both said today at the same oh, time. Nice, great minds. Uh, buying via BT proves to be one of the most successful routes to getting a PlayStation 5 at launch, although it does require you to be an existing BT broadband or EE mobile customer, neither of which apply to me. Nice. Um, if BT isn't an option for you, then some sources claims that Argos uh, has stock and will put it up for sale soon, along with Very, Hughes, JD Williams, Amazon.co.uk, and Amazon Europe. Smiths will apparently have the digital edition as well, but there's no exact time or date for any of the retailers, or indeed any guarantee that the Twitter account is accurate. If you want to avoid paying eBay prices, uh, these might be your last chance for a while, though, as it's not clear when more stock will appear again after this month. Hopefully, it'll become less and less rare as the weeks go, but Sony has offered no guarantees of that, and in fact, has been very quiet on the whole stock situation in general with no indication of when the console might become less scarce or why they haven't tried to do anything about scalpers microsoft are in a similar situation with the xbox series x um, as while the cheaper and less powerful xbox series s has popped up for sale a few times its more powerful sibling has proven just as elusive as the ps5 so if you are a bt um, or an ee customer um that will the fact that there is a barrier for entry will probably make mm -hmm. it easier for you that is me out of the race and just like i am all sky customers uh, are out of the race um unless they have obviously uh, an ee mobile but i'm on o2 and have sky so i'm out of it that's it nope nope i'm not in so yeah feel free to keep your eyes on those we will keep you updated with uh, with progress as it does move forward but it did mention within the article, uh, PS5 UK stock instant updates. That account, do you know what? I'll share their link in the chat so you know who they are referencing. Um, that account plus others uh, do share updates. So IGN UK deals is one. IGN UK do, uh, deals is a good account. Um, but IGN UK do, uh, deals is manned by someone that works at IGN. So isn't necessarily the quickest. So... IGN UK Deals is good for um, ad hoc updates, but if you want the instant alerts, then things like that one, PS5 Instant, and this one, copy link address, uh, PS5 Stock Alert UK, those ones are a bit more faster than IGN UK Deals, uh, if you are after a console. Um, but as we have seen consistently, the systems on all of these websites are dog shit. They think putting a Q.it system is fine um, and that makes it fair what that does is put out a semblance of fairness that ex uh, that can still be exploited by scalpers so if you're not the first one in if you join any form of queue you aren't getting it it's kind of it so you have to be quick you have to be ready argos is getting some more stock apparently apparently i'm hearing this consistency uh, consistently argos does usually go live around three to four o'clock in the morning so if you're up at silly o'clock in the morning, you might get one. Um, Amazon, I'm hearing, will have stock as well. I'm also hearing that Amazon um, commands a massive market share compared to everyone else. So the likelihood is, if you want one online, uh, without having to just be there at that moment in time, I mean, obviously, you still have a very short window of buying it, but Amazon is probably the likely... Uh, most likely place for you to get your hands on a console. So yeah, they are still there. They are still coming. They are popping up. And Game had a resurface of stock today, which Jordan did share earlier, which was the scalpers that got unscalped put back on. Naturally, they've probably just been rescalped again because pff, it's it's, it's going to be the same situation. Until something changes, it's going to be the same. So yeah. 
Uh, I'll go straight up to 4 a.m. this morning for Xboxes. I saw messages at 3 a.m. this morning for Xboxes. Um, but yeah, Xbox Series X, or was it? It was, I can't remember. But yeah, that was like silly o'clock this morning. Uh, but there you go. If you're after a PS5, they do exist and they will keep existing, but it will still continue to be a shit show, no doubt, unless you're in first. If you do get one, though, do let us know. I'm, I'm intrigued to see. I do keep seeing the odd person saying, yeah, I managed to get one. Yay! Or just happened to be on at the right time. Yay! Um, game is a good one. Apparently, game do just occasionally put one console on. <laughs> they just literally just go, oh, okay, we've just got one back from a scalper that wasn't resolved. Let's just put that one online. On, off, and it's gone again. So game is a good one. If you're just sporadically checking to just have a look, you might get yourself a console on there. But anyway, um, uh, Series X. Few years of years that we've actually started to get a load more consoles filtering free over the last week or so. I think this is the, the best week we've had since launch in terms of restocking. It feels like they're restocking every single day. So hopefully this will start to be the norm now. We're starting to see more and more come through. Yeah, yeah. I think the worried bit, though, is that article saying there's no confirmation of when the next queue. So we wait from last year until January. And now it's probably going to be another calendar month or longer end of february before we get some so if you don't get one in this stock update don't probably expect one to get one in the next four weeks unless you're just very lucky um series x game have just gone live with more bundles says enix and that is an issue for me um we were talking about how in the ps4 if you walked into a store you couldn't leave a game store without buying a, a ps4 plus an extra controller plus three games plus the camera and whatever and you had to spend seven eight nine hundred quid Game are doing that online now, which is a bit shit. I hate, hate the upsell. If they have if they have consoles, um, then you can go add a console to your basket, add a controller, add all the rest, and get it as a as you bundle that way. Game pre reserving that stock as a bundle is purely down to them wanting to upsell. There is no other way, way to explain that. It's not as if that has come ring-fenced and Sony have said, yeah, we'll give you a, a reduced price for this console if you buy it with a copy of Spider-Man and a copy of uh, Sackboy yeah. and whatever. That's not that's not how it's working. Game are bundling those up to sell you at upselling uh, prices to make you spend five, six, seven hundred quid as opposed to 350 quid for just your digit one, which is shit. And, and uh, yeah... Uh, I was defending them yesterday, saying that we were sticking the boot in game, but the whole industry does it. Game does that more than anyone else, and they've always done that, and it's a travesty that they get away with it. And it shows you that they don't care about you as a customer, uh, which is shit, because I know a lot of good people that work at game, but the decision makers that want the cash, they wonder why they're going out of business, because people know they're not loyal to the customers, and they're never the best price, so that's why. Um... To be honest, bundles are practically scalping. All of their bundles at the moment include shirts and hats. Fuck off. That is ridiculous. Yeah, I'm going to buy a new PlayStation. What? What? Uh, yeah, I really want a really shit quality play PlayStation t-shirt. Yeah, it's licensed, but it's still shit quality. No, no. Get in the bin. Get in the bin. Uh, Cumbrian's office says, I got lucky. A guy on Twitter said there'd been a major shipment over the weekend on Twitter. Uh, been getting up at 7.30 every morning with laptop ready. On game website, I typed in uh, Miles uh, bundle list comes up. Clicked on it. 10am, clicked on it again. Put in queue. Waited 40 minutes. Bundle I clicked on previously was in cart. Didn't log in. Did it as a guest. All sorted. Good shout. So you already had it in the cart already. Ah. Okay, Cumbrian's office. Is on to something. There you go. There you go. There you go. Okay, just gonna just just gonna load up my. Uh, da, 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 da. <laughs> he just had that comment from his PlayStation Five. <laughs> yeah, you, GG. Well, do you know what? Appreciate the comment. That's that's good. That's good news. Uh, yeah, scalpers uh, talking, saying didn't do not they <laughs> don't know what they're gonna do with them. Yeah, scalpers with a shitload of crap T-shirts. <laughs> do you know what? <laughs> maybe maybe I'm quick to judge. Sticking the boot into game. Uh, for that, maybe they know that all they're doing is milking the scalpers right now. So if that's the case, then boom, <laughs> I'll take it back. I'll take it back. It's not what they're doing. Uh, they're just making a profit. Uh, just like they're scalping the scalpers, which, um, yeah, okay, fair enough. But they will also be scalping some other people caught in the crossfire. So eh, yeah, uh, look at the Xbox bundle. Uh, look at the Xbox bundles at the moment. It's the same for the PS5. I know it's not interested. Not interested in. Pfft, they're giving them advertising it's bullshit it's, that's what it is it is bullshit but anyway we will wrap things up because i don't know how long we've been live for it's probably a while because we went off a few times um and yeah 
Bibby that has the magic of stitching this back together. GG, Bib. Nice. Nice. Uh, but thank you, everyone, for joining us Yay. for yet another episode of The Scoop. Thank you very much for Fish and Beans for dropping the sub. Uh, Salty Dog for dropping the sub. Some some Someone called e Nikes Plus. I don't know for dropping 10 gifties, whatever. I mean, e Nikes, yeah, if you undo it, whatever, mate. No, thank you very much, Jordan. Appreciate the 10 gifties. What a guy. Chucky as well for the raid. Therian Drake for the raid, which killed the stream. God damn it, Mr. Therian Drake. Everyone being here, we seriously appreciate you all getting involved with the comments in the chat as well. You guys make the show what it is, so we appreciate that. Thank you for being here. We will be back with another episode, though, tomorrow. Before then... I may be playing some PUBG this afternoon. It's the same thing as it has been for the last week. Might be. Might be. Might be a case that we don't have a stream because I'm having work done in the house. But I might be back on with some PUBG. If I am, yeah, join us for that. If not, don't have to. Don't have to. But, you know, the best way to do that is to stick around uh, or just drop a follow on the channel and you can get notifications when we do go live. So you can just drop in and just spend your afternoon doing your work or doing whatever you're doing and just have me on the TV absolutely lighting the world up in PUBG. And by that, I mean getting my ass kicked because, yeah, here we go. That's just the way it works. But, hey, anyway, uh, before then, though, Bib, mm. is there anything that you'd like to mention? Yes, of course. If you do want to be involved with the show, then there is two ways that you can do that. First of all, find us on social media. It's at Ice Cream Uploads across all major social media platforms. Second way, get into our Discord. There is an area on there called The Scoop. All we need from you is the URL and your thoughts and opinions. We will then give you our thoughts and opinions on the very next show, which will be at what time tomorrow, Mr. Graham Day? Uh, I think you'll find that it will be at exactly... 11 a.m. 11 a.m. <laughs> 10 a.m. <laughs> Ish, 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 ish. 10 a.m. ish. Uh, we go live each and every single week there, 10 a.m. ish. And then maybe extra content later on, uh, which we could have today with uh, Sub PUBG. So we'll see. Um, as Madge has just done with the reminder, appreciate that, Madge. Exclamation mark loot drop if you're a sub. Um, good reminder because we've just had 12 or 13 of those uh, over the last half an hour or so. If you're a sub, be in the Discord. Um, but don't yeah. just be in the Discord link your accounts up if you don't link your accounts you don't get access to the loot drop which is our free giveaway every month so you're in the giveaway now you will win something potentially one person wins it it could be you if you're in and you've linked your account so do it do it do it do it thanks for the reminder match what a guy what a guy mod of dreams um until then that's it might be back in a bit with pubg might not follow get notifications on that way you know until then have yourselves a fantastic day and stay frosty, stay frosty.